Alright guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about how to grow a YouTube channel from zero subscribers to a thousand subscribers. And I know you're probably wondering, well why on earth would I make a video about that when I haven't even got a thousand subscribers myself? And the answer to that question is because this is not my only channel. I have several other channels on YouTube, but one, my best channel at the moment has about 50,000, I think 57,000 actually now, um, YouTube subscribers. So I sort of know what I'm talking about in terms of growing a channel. The only trouble is I'm now living through what I know to be true, which is that it's very hard to grow a channel from nothing to something. Uh, especially in 2018, there's just so many channels out there and it's so competitive that you'll find it's very difficult to grow a channel from zero to a thousand subscribers, let alone from a thousand to ten thousand and then from ten thousand to a hundred thousand. What I will say though is that there are several things which I know for a fact have made a big difference with the, cha the channel growth. And by the way, I'm talking about the growth of my other channel howtolucid.com, which you can find on YouTube, um, because that is the channel that I have managed to grow the fastest. The reason I'm not making this video on that channel is because that channel is about lucid dreaming, this channel is about everything. So I figured it would fit more with this channel and it sort of makes sense, it sort of makes more sense to talk about it here. So, so let's just get into it. Several things that can make the channel grow that I found personally. Number one, daily uploads. I found that when you upload a video every day, it just snowballs and you find that lots of people watch it and you start to build a sort of following who will watch all of your videos. Even on this channel, although it's very new and the quality isn't as good, I've noticed that there are several of you guys who regularly comment and watch and like my videos. This is what's known as your core audience and they will help you grow your channel to uh, the bigger numbers because they're constantly going to give you that engagement. Like there's a few of you who comment on all my videos, you are my core audience and I'm very grateful for you on this channel, so thank you. Number two, have high quality content and make it sort of interesting. Um, you'll notice that I do tend to edit my videos more on this channel um, and simply, simply because it makes it more engaging. There are lots of times during when I film a vlog where I'll say things or I'll mess up the way I say things or there'll be awkward delays or anything like that. What I'll do when I edit the videos is I'll cut out all of those delays so that hopefully you just see a consistent, concise flow of words that's more engaging and interesting. Otherwise it'll be very boring and it'll be kind of too long to watch as an engaging piece of content. Number three, have high quality camera equipment. Now this isn't the best camera by any means. This is not this is not even above £500 in terms of like the budget for cameras, which I know that as far as YouTubers go, that's not very high at all. You know, um, vloggers like Casey Neistat and uh, various other ones, they use high quality expensive cameras like DSLRs and you know, those big bulky cameras with the big lenses and, and all the special effects and tripods and everything. Now, I wouldn't say that you need to spend more than £500 on your camera setup, but it does help to at least have a good point and shoot camera like the one I'm using here. Um, and the one I'm using here is this Sony DCS WX500. And by the way, this, this brings me on to my second point, which is to try and move around and create a bit more of life in your videos. You'll notice that I don't always just sit down in my videos, especially when I make travel videos. I, I try and uh, move around a bit, so it's slightly more interesting and not just me sitting in the same place. But then that also leads me on to my other point, which is to also have locked off shots like this. This is a tripod shot where the camera is in one place and you're just focusing on what I'm saying. So obviously other vloggers have made uh, videos about this, but try and try and think about the way you're using your camera and the video equipment. If you want someone to pay attention to what you're saying, the words that you're saying, have a locked off shot where there's not much distraction so they can actually focus on what you're saying. If you're doing something active like moving around or, or you know doing something physical then obviously grab the camera, move it around, maybe get a head mounted GoPro or something so that you're more able to capture that type of shot. Number four, I think we're on number four, create content around keywords. Now this is a bit controversial because a lot of vloggers will say just be creative and the viewers will come. That is true to some degree but I think another strategy that you should maybe do as well. You'll notice I make a variety of videos on here. It's not just keyword stuff, it's also random things as well. So try and think about what keywords people might type in. Like this video for example, people might type into YouTube how to grow a YouTube channel or how to grow a vlog and that is known as a keyword. So that is a keyword people will type in, hopefully lots of people will type that in, they'll get to this video and they'll become subscribers hopefully. So that's known as a keyword that you want to target a video around. You don't have to do it in every video and I would actually suggest not to do it in all, all of your videos. Um, but for some videos you want to, especially if there's a definite message to your video, like if you're if you're going to a particular area for example or you're reviewing a restaurant or you're doing an experience at a specific place, 
then it makes sense to use a keyword. Like for example, say if you did a skydive at, in, in London, right? Your keyword could be review of the skydiving place in London, whatever it's called, instead of just titling that vlog something like I jumped out of a plane, which, also, which would also work. That's less keyword orientated. So sort of use your brain a bit and just think about what people might type into YouTube and also what people might want to click on because sometimes keyword titles aren't always the most attractive to click on, which is bringing me very well onto my fifth point. I think it's the fifth one which is to make sure that your videos are interesting enough that people want to click them and watch them. You've got to, you've got to consider that when people are browsing YouTube, most of the audience is young, so there's, you've got to consider that as well. But also people will only click on videos they think will benefit them or entertain them. So if your title is something really boring and your thumbnail isn't interesting, then people won't click it. So you'll notice that what I do with my thumbnails is I try and create some sort of story or try and make them a bit interesting so that they're going to be clicked on. But there are two main approaches with thumbnails. So the first one is to have something really informative. So this is either text in those little neat boxes that you've seen me use, or it's like a split screen thing where it says before and after or whatever. Something that tells people instantly what they're going to get in the video. That's the first approach. The second approach is the mystery approach, which is where they don't have a clue what they're going to get in the video, but that makes them curious enough to click to find out. This will be like those, you see a lot of gaming YouTubers do this, especially PewDiePie, where he'll put like a thumbnail of a question mark or a random picture of something. You don't know what it is, but you want to click to find out what it is, especially if the title is also not giving anything away. Now this, this technique does work, but I find this works mainly when you already have an audience, because if you already have an audience, they're going to be curious to see what the video is about. Whereas if you don't have an audience, then how is that going to reach new people? There's no keyword, there's no story in the thumbnail, so how is anyone going to know what it's about and want to click on it? That being said, there are obviously exceptions to this for both types of thumbnails, so just do a mixture. I always like to do a mixture of videos, different thumbnails, different titles, and just see what works. And number six is probably the most important one, actually. I don't know why I left it till last, but just make sure you enjoy the, the videos you make. Like, I don't make these videos because I have to, I make them because I want to. So that's it guys, that is the six ways to grow a YouTube channel from nothing to a thousand subscribers. These tips work regardless of how big your channel is, but the chances are if you get to above 10,000 to 100,000 subscribers, you're already doing these things because you already know that that's what works to get the growth. This is mainly for you new YouTubers or vloggers, and it also applies to me, which is why I'm gonna be using these tips, I'm gonna be doing these things in this vlog, in this channel. So. So you'll be able to follow along my journey to my first thousand and then 10,000 and then so on subscribers. On a side note, I'm about to hit 500 subscribers on this channel, which is quite cool. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you. And if you are one of my core audience, which I mentioned before, if you do comment on most of my videos, please keep going because it's very encouraging. Like it really does mean a lot to me. And I do genuinely read every single comment. I try and reply to them all as well, but I also definitely read all the comments and I do appreciate you guys. So thank you.